Hi, it's Brian again showing off my 1947 South Bend Model 9A metalworking lathe. Uh, I've got it uh, turning very slowly at the moment so I can kind of show off some of the pieces as they actually move here. So let's kind of go through the anatomy of this thing real quick. So start with that, which is obviously a newer addition. That's a variable frequency drive or VFD which powers the three-phase AC motor there, which is obviously also new. You know, the advantage of a VFD is you can control speed much more easily than by switching belts with the old system. So you can see that speeds it up and that slows it back down. So I'll leave it running really slowly so you can kind of see everything turning. And also because it's quieter that way. Anyway, uh, the pulley system in the back there is called a uh, counter shaft. It's just used for gearing it down and also for uh, you know providing more gear ratios. You won't find that on a modern lathe, but on an old one they all had it. Um, this one is old enough that it has a flat belt drive. Originally that would have been a leather belt. This is a modern replacement. Same basic function though. This here is called the headstock. The business end is called the chuck. That's a three-jaw chuck. You can also find them with four-jaw chucks. The three-jaw chucks are a little easier to work with. The four-jaw chucks are generally more adjustable, but more of a pain to work with. In the back, you find the back gears. Uh, in the case of a uh, lathe that has a quick-change gearbox, you won't find as many uh, gears in the back here, and there won't be as many options for rearranging them, but playing with these lets you uh, change the the uh, speed at which the gearbox and the and the uh, feed screw here runs at. So you also use it for reversing the direction of the feed screw with this lever here, which I'll try not to stick my fingers in since it's running right now. Anyway, a quick change gearbox, you get, uh, depending on the lathe, you get a bunch of different ratios. This one has 40. You use it to select the uh, speed at which the screw runs, which controls the uh, size of the threads per inch you get if you're threading, and it controls the uh, power feed rates if you're uh, using a power feed for cutting. This here is the carriage or saddle, depending on what you want to call it. Uh, both terms are used. Piece in front is called the apron with all the levers and pulleys on it. Uh, this guy here is a cross slide. It's used for moving the uh, cutting tool this way. This is called a compound. It's also used for adjusting the position of the cutting tool, but you can adjust the angle at which it sits. The uh, apron carriage assembly will t move side to side. This is longitudinal feed. This is cross feed. But obviously, as I can just shown off, you can do that manu manually. Um, they'll also run run automatically if you set the right levers here. So for example, if I wanted to do a power longitudinal feed on this South Bend lathe, I would tighten the clutch here. Actually, probably I would put it in gear first. I think it's up. And then tighten the clutch. And if I'm lucky, oh, there it goes. You can see it turning very slowly. The uh, carriage hand wheel there is turning. And that would mean the entire machine the entire carriage is moving forward. I'll speed it up a little bit so you can see it moving better. It's a little hard to tell because it's moving so slowly, but the whole carriage is moving forward towards the uh, chuck. If I was uh, cutting the side of this, you know, it might, might want to, you know, changing the diameter of this workpiece, I could use this function to do it all automatically. Another function this one has is a power cross feed, something the 9A lathes have. Which if I put it into, uh, let's see if I get it to go into gear here. There it goes. Power cross feed, so it can automatically feed side to side. So again, hard to tell because it moves so slowly, but the. Uh, cross slide is very slowly moving towards me. If I stand here long enough, you'll see it, that it is moving. And the actual cutting tool goes in the tool post holder. This is someone, somebody's homemade one. 
replace the original one, which looks uh, more like a, uh, well, here it is, looks like this, would mount like that. I think this is called a lantern-style tool post holder, for obvious reasons. So I'll take it out of gear there before I crash into something. The last major function that the apron has is for threading. That's what this lever is. It works similarly to the longitudinal feed, except that it's precision and it doesn't slip, unlike uh, with the clutch-driven power feed here, which can slip, which is an advantage in certain circumstances, because this reduces the likelihood of damage. So with my particular uh, position on the uh, quick change box here, let's see, I'm on B3, so it's cutting the equivalent of 20 threads per inch if it was actually had a, a piece of work in there. So, last major piece here, tailstock. You can use it for drilling holes right in the center of something. You can imagine how that would work. Um, if you were holding or supporting a, a, a longer piece, you might use a, a, either a live center like this one or a dead center, which looks similarly but doesn't have a bearing here. Of course, this whole thing sits on a big piece of iron called the bed, which has the tracks in it that everything slides on back and forth. So, this is a South Bend machine. It's seems to be a pretty common machine. They're very well made. They're very well supported. There's usually like a thousand different uh, auctions on eBay at any one time for parts for these things. You can still get new parts. A lot of support on various community forums. So it seems to be a good machine to get if you want to get an older lathe. Anyway, I'm looking forward to learning how to use this thing well enough to actually be able to make stuff. So good to go, hopefully. I'm happy to have it.